Red light therapy is so hot right now. Red light therapy. Red light therapy. Red light therapy. And with all the hype, there's been a lot of devices that have come onto the market and I'm getting flooded with questions from the most recent video that I put out about red light therapy. So I wanted to make a dedicated video to answer all of the biggest questions and concerns when it comes to red light therapy. And in order to do that, I invited the CEO of Red Therapy Co, which is a company that I've been working with for years to answer all these questions and also to introduce you to his brand new red light therapy device that's unlike any other on the market. Say hello to the YouTube family. Hey, what's up everybody? Eric from Red Therapy Company and uh, excited to be here. We did some videos about three years ago and I'm really excited to follow up and we've learned a ton. We've developed new devices. We've improved a bunch and uh, yeah, so I hope we can add some value for you guys today. Great, so I would love to start with the new devices and what have you changed and what has evolved since the first iteration. This is like dialed in is the best way I can describe it. So we've taken kind of every single component that you need to make a red light therapy device and done every single thing we can to make it the best possible. So starting with the lenses, these are custom made lenses with our own mold. They're custom glass lenses so that the light diffusion is as smooth as it can be. So you get perfectly even coverage. You also have less light loss going through the lens since it's a glass lens instead of plastic. We have the LEDs custom manufactured for us at the exact correct wavelength that you need for the therapeutic effect. So at 660 nanometers and 850 nanometers, some of the competitors or cheap ones you see on Amazon are just kind of off the shelf red LEDs, which are not exactly in the perfect spectrum. Uh, we also have custom LED drivers. We also have a pulsing module, which allows you to change from 10 hertz, 20 hertz, 40 hertz. And you might've heard the research about gamma. Gamma is 40 hertz. And so that's what you need if you're looking for that effect. You can select red, near infrared, or different pulsing wavelengths lengths and we now have the timer our old devices didn't have a timer but built in that way you can start it and then just relax and just soak in that beautiful red light until the timer's off and the device will just switch off automatically that's also a safety feature so if you fall asleep because it's such a relaxing sensation to be in front of the red light there's no problem with that at all it will turn off and uh, you won't overexpose yourself to red light and we wanted you to be able to use it anywhere anytime that you need so uh, there's a handle and then quick release every device comes with a door hanging kit also a wall mounting kit and optionally the stand. You can actually take it off the wall or off the stand easily using the quick release so that you could use it anywhere you want around the house or on your feet or on the couch. So we just wanted to make like the best possible device with all of the best features, all of the top line uh, high quality components and make it easy and flexible to use. So it's like the ultimate red light therapy experience. Some panels can be very expensive, especially if you're trying to get full body coverage. So I asked Eric how he approached this when it comes to his pricing structure. We were looking to really make like the best possible device and at a size that can still give you full body coverage in a single unit. So there's not this uh, requirement of stacking the panels. You can just buy one single unit. So when you look at the competitors who have the stacking lights, you need two of their lights to equal one of these. So these have 60 degree lenses. And so it's the right balance of irradiance of like the maximum is like focusing a flashlight. You want it focused so that it's, it's penetrating deep, but you also want it wide enough that even though the device isn't as tall as the tallest person, the light actually spreads out from the device. So by the time you're six inches or a foot away, it covers your entire body. I'm six foot six tall, so I designed this for me to be able to cover my whole body. So I'm sure anyone out there, it will be full body coverage for you too. If you do want to upgrade to shorten the treatment time, we now offer a dual setup, which is essentially you have two facing each other and you stand right in the middle and you can get that you're front and back at the exact same time. And there are no competitors that offer anything like this at the current time. And the people we were mentioning that have the stackable panels, you have to do that like on a door. And so if it's not on a stand, then you can't do them back to back. You can have front and back, full body for about half the price of the leading brand. So one of the most common questions that I got is what is the difference between these panels and just some random panels that you can get off Amazon? The big difference is like the quality of the components and the consistency of the light output. So like I mentioned, these lenses are custom lenses designed with with the spacing in mind and at exactly the right angle to have the diffusion necessary for even light coverage. It's also, we have third party independent testing of our radiance values. So when you buy something from Amazon or, or you know, kind of a cheap 
knockoff thing, you're gonna get what you pay for, right? And so it might be too powerful, it might not be powerful enough, and the light spectrums are likely not exactly what you need. And medical research on, that's done on these wavelengths are very specific wavelengths, and that's why we have our custom LEDs made just for us, so that they peak at exactly the right wavelength that penetrates into your body, into your cells, and actually have the effect on the cytochrome C oxidase site where nitric oxide gets stuck. So I got very scientific there, but that's one of the ways that red light therapy works. So it's very important you have the correct wavelengths. So some of the cheap ones uh, on Amazon, obviously they're just gonna use off the shelf, cheapest possible LEDs. They're gonna use cheap plastic lenses. So the diffusion, the irradiance, and then the actual wavelengths of light will all probably not be correct. And so therefore you don't know exactly the right time and dosage to do. So it's like, I mean, if you're investing in your health, there's kind of nothing more important. So why would you skimp on that? One of the really unique things about Eric's device is that it has this pulsing feature. So ours pulses at 10 hertz, 20 hertz, 40 hertz, or you can have it on continuous wave. So just on. The big deal there is that there's research on the brain showing that if you have gamma entrainment, which essentially means that the brain waves at 40 hertz, there's like a cleaning effect in the brain. There are some studies about dementia, traumatic brain injury that are showing promising results from pulsing light at 40 hertz. There's also an effect where called photo inhibition in the cells, where when you shine a very bright light on your cells, they go into a, a protection mode that prevents some of the positive effects you get from red light therapy. But by pulsing the near infrared light, we're giving the cells a little bit of a break. 40 times a second, like a little mini break, 40 times a second. So they're less likely to go into photo inhibition. And there's some early studies showing up to a 15% increase in the benefits of red light therapy by pulsing it. So it's the same effects, it's just uh, boosting it by 15%. And because this research is ongoing and this is the cutting edge, that's why we included 10 hertz, 20 hertz, and 40 hertz. So as the research develops, you're not gonna need to buy a new device. If something comes out that 20 hertz is actually the best, we'll let you know that. And all you do is press a button to switch it to 20 hertz. So if you're interested in getting a red light therapy device, I'll put a link down below with a fat discount code for you. And if you decide you wanna get this device or one of Eric's devices, we'll also throw in a free red light therapy ebook that will educate you on everything you need to know. And I'll also throw in my Zen Sleep Masterclass so you can learn how to optimize your sleep and what are the biggest things that are getting in the way of you getting optimal sleep. So red light therapy plus sleep optimization is like the most dangerous combo when it comes to optimizing your energy. So I really encourage you to go check that out. And now I wanna answer a lot of the questions that I got in my most recent video. How long does it take for red light therapy to start working? Actually, uh, funny enough, a lot of times when people very first use it, the nitric oxide that's stuck in their cells gets released for the first time in a long time. So they'll feel tingling when they very first use red light therapy. So in that way, it works right away. The other thing is if people have circulation issues, we've gotten a lot of positive reviews of people saying that their hands and feet were cold or they didn't couldn't feel them for a long time and all of a sudden after their first red light therapy session they felt all warmed up and finally their hands and feet got the circulation that they needed so things like that uh, can have an effect right away but then the other things let's say you're going for skin anti-aging most of the studies that are done on that are 45 to 60 days and so it's a, like a one percent improvement per day which of course over a hundred days can stack and over 365 days can be dramatic of you without red light therapy and you with red light therapy for a year but anyways the reason we have a 60 day money back guarantee is so you can try it for 45 or even 60 days and do before and after pictures of yourself see how you feel see the energy difference over that time period that's plenty of time so that you should see a positive effect and if you don't or you don't like it for any reason um, you can send it back for a full refund I know that I've definitely seen and or heard people say hey I tried red light therapy but I don't really feel anything so and I talked about that in the video with Ari Wynn that you can go check out over here and for that reason I think it's really cool that you have this long refund because then if people don't like it or it doesn't have that big of an effect for them, it's not like a needle mover like it was for me, then they can just send it back. Yeah, yeah, and I think Ari hit on this in, in your video, which is like um, this one person improvement, it's almost like eating a little bit healthier over a year is gonna make you feel a lot better than if you didn't do that. So red light therapy is definitely one of those things, which is nudging your health in the right direction. And when you combine it with other modalities like exercise and sleeping well, it can have profound effects on your health. Some people have reported having some slight negative side effects when it comes to red light therapy. So I asked them why this might be the case. As an industry, people are kind of trying to figure this out right now, but some people have like a detail 
detox type of effect. And so it might be actually your body detoxing. The other kind of bucket, which I actually fall into, is light sensitivity. So if you're more sensitive to light, you always need to wear sunglasses when you go outside, you get burned easily, this kind of thing. You, you might be in a group of people that are just more sensitive to light, and it means you just need much less red light therapy to get the same results. So I use the light instead of 10 minutes, I'll use it for two to five minutes. And so we now recommend that everyone start out at a smaller dose, two to five minutes. And if you want to do more, you can expand that into 10 and basically listen to your body to see what is the optimal amount for you. Another common question that I got is, what about specific medical conditions or medications? Does this interfere? Are there certain people who shouldn't be doing red light therapy? And is there anything to be concerned about? Certain health conditions and certain medications, um, like Accutane as an example, can make you much more light sensitive. So any medication like that or a health condition, you want to ch check with your dermatologist or your doctor and tell them you want to try red light therapy. Luckily, this is getting more popular. And so most dermatologists and even some doctors now understand. But it's very important that you work with them because if you have a condition or are on a medicine that increases light sensitivity, you want to do a lot less and you just want to make sure that you have the approval of your doctor. The other thing is if you have a skin cancer as an example, red light therapy actually helps all cells have more energy and may uh, help cancerous cells have more energy too. It also helps your immune system have more energy to fight those cells. So there's a, a trade-off there, but it's very important if you have a skin cancer or something like that to not use red light therapy. Talk to your doctor if you're wanting to try that once you're uh, through that recovery process. I saw a lot of these types of questions in the comments, which is what is the difference between the red light therapy device and an infrared sauna? And can we do both? So that's a really great question. Get it all the time too. And in the, in the spectrum of light, an infrared sauna is further into the non-visible and heat spectrum. Red and infrared light out of our devices are different than what you get from an infrared sauna. They have complementary benefits, but different benefits. So actually the best possible thing is to do both. And so with the door hanging kit, we've designed it in such a way where you can actually hang these lights from the sauna window or door from the outside. People ask us all the time, can I just put this in my sauna? And you can't because these LEDs are the most powerful LEDs that are even made and they get very hot, which is why you have this whole cooling fans and, and everything in there to keep it cool because it will actually burn out if they get too hot. So you can shine it through the glass. The glass doesn't prevent the light from coming through at all and you can uh, get the full effects. But essentially the mitochondrial effect of knocking the nitric oxide out is a red and infrared effect. And then the mid and far infrared heating effects have cardiovascular benefits, they have mitochondrial benefits because they stress the mitochondria in a different way. So like I said, complementary benefits, but different benefits. What if the infrared sauna has near infrared as part of the spectrum? Then would it be the same? It's still not the same part of the spectrum. Unfortunately, this is kind of a marketing thing. So they'll say infrared, but it's really mid and far infrared. And then they may even include some LED lights in there now, but they're low power. And the reason I know that is because in order for them to be this powerful, it would need to look about like this. So unless you have something in your sauna that looks like that, and if you did, it would burn out. So all the ones I've seen and tested, they put uh, a little LED panel, but they're about 1% as bright as this. So you're really not getting the same effect. Another one that kept coming up, which is, can't we just go outside and get the sunlight? Why do we have to use these special devices to get what the sun and nature already produces? Yeah, yeah, actually you can. So part of the theory behind like why this all works so well is because uh, you need light nutrients and you can actually be deficient in light nutrients. And so going out in the sun is a beautiful, amazing thing that everyone watching this should do. But in order to get the kind of dosage of red and infrared light you can get from this, you would be over doing the UV and getting a burn essentially like that. So having a device like this is still useful even if you get enough sunlight because you can get more of the benefits of the red and infrared without overdoing the UV. And what about EMF? Is this something we should be concerned about? That's a great question. We get this a lot because uh, people that are interested in their health end up interested in red light therapy and also trying to minimize EMFs, which makes a lot of sense. So because this is an extremely powerful electronic device, there's going to be some EMFs. But we designed these from scratch knowing exactly what people wanted. And so what we did was actually put an EMF iron blocking cage inside of the device. I don't know if you ever noticed on your microwave, but in the door, there's all those little circles. The reason those are little circles is to prevent the microwaves from coming out. So we designed these holes and these lenses and everything to be smaller than the EMF field that's trying to come out. And so you can measure this with an EMF meter and it will be zero or very close to zero because the field is trapped inside. And so we actually also designed the cooling fans that are in there are a magnet spinning around a coil, which can create EMF. So we actually 
actually spent an incredible amount of time even designing custom fans with a custom magnet to lower the magnetic EMFs as much as possible. Now the only place if you measure the EMFs that you'll find some is at the joint where the plug is because that will happen with any electronic device as well as the touch screen because the touch screen actually uses capacitive touch to work. So when you're turning that on and off, the way it's sensing your finger touching, is using EMFs, but that's true of any touch device. Once you back away six inches or a foot, I mean, there's there's zero EMFs. And so we've done everything that is possible to do in a device like this to lower the EMFs to zero. Another one that kept coming up is, is it safe for our eyes? And do we need to wear protective glasses? It's very safe. It's more of a comfort thing. So there's actually uh, studies on red light therapy for healing macular degeneration. And so red light is shown to be very helpful for the eyes after 40, but uh, it's a very bright light. It's about as bright as the sun. So the glasses that we give you lower the total uh, light by 10X. So it's just much more comfortable for your eyes and your eyes are so sensitive to light that they don't need as much red light to get the uh, therapeutic effect. And so we just recommend wearing the glasses, but you don't even have to. A lot of people will do it without. The one caveat to that is if you were to use it very close, like six inches away, which we don't even recommend, that's mostly for like deep tissue muscles in your legs. If you were, you know, doing a workout recovery type of a, a treatment, but if you were to shine it that close on your face, you could heat your eye. Now it would hurt and you would not want to do that. So most people would just naturally not do that, but that's the only like theorized risk to your eyes is overheating from having your eyes too close to that. So again, that's why we provide the glasses just out of an abundance of caution and comfort. And what is the best time to do red light therapy in respect to exercise? So it's beneficial before and after, but as a rule of thumb, we, we found if you're going for fat loss, using it before is most beneficial because there's some studies showing that using red light therapy takes the lipids and takes them out of the cell and puts them back into the bloodstream temporarily. And now those are the fats in your cells. And so if you work out while the fats are in your blood, your body will burn them. So you're actually releasing fat that you can then burn, which there's studies showing a combination of weightlifting or, or aerobic exercise combined with red light therapy can accelerate fat loss dramatically. And so people find very good results with that. On the other hand, if you're trying to put on muscle, you ideally want to do it after the workout. So during the workout, you're actually uh, tearing the muscle tissue down. And you know, after the workout, you're going to do protein shake and everything. And then your body's going to work trying to rebuild those muscles. And the way it does that is through ATP. And that's exactly what red light therapy helps is produce more ATP so your body can recover faster. So I've mentioned a lot of different studies in here and there's actually as of today, 7,459 I think. And so we'll link in the description a spreadsheet that has all of these studies broken down by category. So if you wanna look at something for skin or, or whatever it is, you can look at that resource and we'll highlight some of the ones that we find most fascinating. It's very exciting to see such a powerful therapy to start to get some traction finally. And I'm so excited for what's to come in this space. I hope you found this video educational and informative and if you want to continue to learn more and go further down the rabbit hole then go check out this video where i interview ari witten who's the world's leading expert in red light therapy where we talk about the science of red light therapy how it's actually working on a cellular level and then the different applications that i use it for that i think are most exciting for the majority of the population thanks so much for watching go check out that video right here and i'll see you in the next one take care and be well